Okay, so back on the Bronco project here. Basically, when you do uh, the power by the hour um, accessory drive, you need to take off the F-150 timing cover. This is an F-150 engine. And so um, valve covers need to come off and all the accessories are off already. But um, we're gonna see if we can get the crank pulley off and get, uh, get started on this conversion quick. Okay, so the main harness is stripped off now and we got it basically down to just the long block here and so we're gonna pop the valve covers off and uh, see what we're working with here. So the timing cover's off now. Little little tap action. There's a little little lip you can get behind here, and uh, just pushed it off with a with a uh, mallet. And uh, now you can see the inside of this. Um, doesn't look really that bad for having you know 300,000 miles. Probably take a look down into the pan here later and and see if there's anything alarming. But um, anyway, we're gonna look it over and see what we see. All right, well after further inspection, we found this little tail, and this is part of the liner of one of the uh, timing chains, and I think actually it probably went right there because that fits in there too good. That had to probably been where that was. And you'll notice that if I get this out of here, if I take that out of there, this one is, you know, I would say uh, much looser than this side. So based on the fact that this uh, motor has basically 300,000 on it, um, I think we're gonna do some timing uh, rehab here um, and get this thing back up to spec. I'm going to replace the um, timing set on it with a Melling 3-1036S. And so that's for the pickups, I believe. And anyway, it comes with new chains, new guides, new tensioners, and um, that's about it. So primaries and secondaries. So uh, we're gonna get to disassembly here, get the old stuff off and the new stuff on. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is rotate the crank over till the keyways at 12 o'clock. You just wanna make sure that your um, data matrix right here and right here, that there's, those are both facing up. If not, uh, rotate it over an entire 360 degrees once more. Next thing to do is take the uh, passenger side tensioner off. Okay, then take the guide off of the little dowel. There, there you go.
Okay, now you want to rotate back um, counterclockwise um, so that the keyway faces the nine o'clock. So that's a quarter turn. And now the L is facing up there. Okay, now you want to undo the other tensioner, the, the driver's side. Okay, so now the primary chains are off and now we'll go to pulling the secondary chains off. So you want to hit these six bolts, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and take this whole thing off as a group. Okay, so once you got those six bolts off, that whole, the pair of the sprockets can come off uh, together. So remove the same six bolts on this side and then pull the group of a uh, couple of sprockets off uh, in the same fashion. So to get the um, secondary tensioner loosened up a little bit, I just took this channel locks and grabbed it like here and just compressed a little bit like that. And that gave us a little spring so we can maneuver the um, chain and everything off of there. Okay, so one of these uh, top secondary guides just just kind of snapped on us when we were originally farting with it but basically what you want to do is is compress this with like a pliers or something and then it was easy to turn this 90 degrees so then the chain just kind of like slid right off and the sprockets came off and we didn't damage this one anymore we have new ones so it wasn't a big deal kind of live and learn deal but uh, um, in this instance that would have would have saved them if you were trying to reuse them Okay, so to get the uh, secondary tensioner apart, you basically pull the little piece, um, there's this little uh, clip underneath, pull that out, and then the whole th thing should pull or push basically out of that sleeve. There you go. Okay, so that's pulled out, and now we have all replaceable parts from here. All right, so here's the back of the um, driver's side sprockets. And you'll notice there's a mark here and a mark right there and those should be in line with each other and opposing so those are close and then the new kit comes with a chain with a um, two mark two links marked and one single mark uh, link marked and so on this one you straddle like that you split it right in half the link and then this one here it goes between those two links and the reason that they're not both like this is because it has an odd number of links so you just can't do that so um, that's how it's set up so you install the new uh, secondary tensioners and it comes with a, a new body a new clip for the bottom and then a new bottom um, uh, guide okay so real quick um, we got the tensioner body put in with the little cap on the bottom right there um, that like the little silver part goes on first the black part slides in this way then you take the two sprockets with the chain and you slide it over and what kind of helped with, is with this guide you can turn this guide so if you turn him like here the chain just kind of ramps up there and then you can turn it to the direction we got a little further for the sprockets to go back but um, you can turn the <clears throat> tensioner to be right so um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and put these six bolts in and get everything sorted there first. Okay, so again, we got our, we got our left hand. You can see that the, the lift is vertical back there. And we have our pin and our L, and those are exactly in line. This is the center of the cam, and L is facing at 12 o'clock. And then if you go around the back side here, you can maybe see that link in the line. And then it was the double link in the line over here, and that's all set up and still um, good to go. We tightened all the six, and uh, it's ready. So now we're gonna do the other side just the same, except for in this case, on the other side, we're gonna have the R facing up rather than the L because we're on the right head, right hand head. 
Okay, now we're gonna put the main ch primary chains on and uh, start with the driver's <clears throat> lower uh, guide. Okay, so the primary chain, it doesn't matter which way is out because uh, it's symmetrical basically. So lay the marked link across um, the single uh, notch right there. And then draw it down across the guide so that you get on the straddle that mark right there. So if you see the, the marked link on the bottom of the crank is straddled again and we're straddling right here too. So then you take the second uh, guide and lay it over the chain on that pivot right there. And it just lays there and waits for the tensioner. So the next thing you do is you take the tensioner and in this case with this kit it already has this little pin put in it so that it's already retracted. But you go ahead and put, put the pin or put the tensioner out so that it adds pressure onto the uh, guide and then the kit came with new hardware all right so this side's done we got everything in we just haven't pulled the pin just yet and then same process on the other one start with the long one and then do the curved one we set this side with the crank key keyway at nine o'clock right here and now we're going to rotate it back to 12 12 o'clock straight up and down okay so just like on the other side now there's your mark right right there that little mark and we're straddling it with the dark link we rode over that dowel right there and now we came up here and we got our dark link straddling now our right see the R for the right right hand head so now we got this uh, tightened up here so there we go so this is one of the um, guides from the truck originally and you can see um, how that is just worn through razor thin and uh, basically the rest of this um, guide is down in the oil pan or in the pickup screen so um, anyway it's probably a good thing we changed this. We thought about leaving it but um, I guess if you have 300,000 on your truck maybe you might want to start thinking about it. So anyway, uh, that's why we're doing this. Now we're going to pull the oil pan off. We got the oil drained out of it now. And we're just finishing up the last few bolts. We'll pull the oil pan out, make sure the screen's clear and uh, there's no debris in the bottom of the pan. All right, so we pulled the oil pan off, cleaned it out. There wasn't really anything in there. And <laughs> we sprayed it with brake clean, turned it a little funny colors, but it's okay. And so uh, anyway, now the next thing is just to put the timing cover on and the valve covers. Okay, so here's the power by the hour um, Mustang timing cover. That's what you have to swap out from the F-150 one. It's got a new front main in it, and then uh, also move the VCT solenoids over. They just bolt in right there, so you can just transfer those across. Now we're gonna go up here and uh, put a couple dabs of silicone. The have RTV, it'd be here, 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 here here and then back down there and uh, those are going to be the locations that you're going to need um, silicone and then when we put the valve cover on we'll probably we'll probably put a little dab up here and up there and same same so hopefully we'll be able to do that all here yet tonight You do? Okay, so we put the crank uh, bolt and, and the uh, balancer back on here. And so we tightened it to 65 foot pounds and then we backed off and then we retightened it to 74 foot pounds. This is a torque yield bolt, so we didn't do the plus 90. Um, it's already stretched, call it good. So if we were putting a supercharger on, we'd think about it, but I'm, I'm not too worried about how it is. So now um, we'll see about uh, putting the valve covers on here. The valve covers that um, came on the, the pickup were pretty roached. They had um, 
I don't know if they've been removed or what the situation was, but for sure they had experienced a lot of Minnesota salt. So I had to purchase new hardware because a lot some of them were like stripped and and uh, rounded off just just because they were so rusted. So uh, here, here's the new 27 of them or however many there were there, um, quite a few. And then uh, obviously they're they're pretty expensive. I want to say they're like four four bucks a pop or something like that, but crazy. And then also the uh, we needed VCT seals, we needed valve uh, cover gaskets, we needed the spark plug wells, all of it. So um, that's just really kind of expensive stuff, but uh, got it all sorted here to make old valve covers basically new. Okay, so here's the um, new water pump. Uh, it has an O-ring to seal. And then we just kind of spritz the, the tube with, with uh, some paint. And so uh, you just slap it in there and it should be good to go. All right, so the water pump's on here. Looks good. And then real quick, we are uh, torquing down the valve covers. It's like seven and a half foot pounds, so very little. And then um, I think next we'll see about the transfer case because uh, the old, obviously, F-150 one is still on here and that, uh, that won't be staying. So uh, we'll be putting a Dana 20 uh, conversion on it.